by um, offering our thoughts and prayers to uh, Lisa Lopez Galvin, and her family, all the families that were impacted the day of the parade, um, certainly a heartbreaking and, and tragic day for us. Uh, our organization has been in contact with the families and we will continue to do so and be a pillar of support for them both now and into the future. And, and um, speaking of support, I certainly want to thank the, uh, the first responders that day, uh, men, and women, men and women in uniform uh, for their support and really everyone that day that um, you know, showed their, their guidance during, during a tough time. Um, numerous player accounts and stories and proud of those guys for, for the work they did and, and for the calmness they showed. So definitely wanted to start off by again um, sending our thoughts and prayers to those families. It's, um, it's tough to transition now in, into football, but understand that's, that's why we're here. And a um, lot to be proud and, and thankful for. Eight straight AFC West titles, six AFC championships, four Super Bowls in the last six years, three Super Bowl wins. So back-to-back um, -back titles hadn't been done in a while, and we're looking forward to going af after that ever-elusive three-peat. And um, wouldn't be here without the outstanding leadership of, of Clark and, and the Hunt family and Mark and his crew, our great players, our outstanding coaching staff, Ted Cruz, um, for his amazing job that he does all year. Um, and I, I, my my personnel staff, I can't, can't thank them enough. I truly believe I have the um, best group of scouts in the NFL. So looking forward to being here and, and starting this process, meeting with player agents and getting to know the the new draft prospects and to meet them and interview them. So with that, I'll take your questions. Right. Can you talk about how you've assessed the receiver position since the Tyreek Hill trade and kind of how you will Assessing it, uh, this awesome. I think um, much like any position, we're always looking to get better. And so, um, you know, whether it be receiver, O-line, D-line, DBs, any opportunity we can to make our team better, um, we're going to do that. And so we put a high priority on the depth in our roster. And, and so we'll, um, you know, we'll attack that much like we do all the positions and try to get the very best players we can and go through our process. Every team's process is a little bit different and unique. Um, we have ours, and um, you know, there's always a chance to refine and tune things. But um, again, I, I think in this league, because of such a long season, I'm talking 20 game season, uh, it's a marathon, and you have to attack every position and, and with the mindset of just having that depth because it's not a matter of if but when players go down. Brett, Andy was the offense is a difficult one to pick up, especially for a rookie. When you were scouting machines, did you see something that told you you could pick it up and be relied upon at 12 o'clock? Yeah, we did a lot of work on him, and that, that is, a, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, it is, it's a, a little bit different in our offense. There's a lot of verbiage, a lot of dialogue. You're always going to have a coaching staff that puts a ton of pressure on young players to come in and perform. Our situation is a little unique where you have a coaching staff and a quarterback that puts a lot of pressure for the players to come in and perform right away. So um, credit to Rasheed. I mean, I, he, it, it just speaks to him and his resilience. Um, you know, it was a lot early on, and our coaches just did a great job of pacing him. I know early on you see the flashes and you want more and more and more, but there was a plan, there was a vision, and sometimes these things take time. Something, sometimes they don't um, happen as soon as you want, and it takes some time. But with Rashi, I think he was determined to make it happen this year and to keep working, and, you know, he did a great job. So certainly um, credit to him and the work he put in off the field with the playbook and with our coaches after practice. I mean, we're going to, just like last year, um, with Chris and with LJ, with a lot of our players, we get a chance to meet the agents this week. And um, he's at the top of the list. You know, love Chris and tried really hard to get something done, and we didn't. Um, but when we got together right after that Detroit game, we had a great talk. And, um, you know, both parties, I think, want to be here. So we'll get to work. And, you know, that's certainly a guy we want back and love and want to see him finish it in his career here in Kansas City. Hey, Brad, um, well, I mean, you know, I think our division, tremendous coaching. I mean, I think the first thing you think of is the outstanding coaching. Um, and now two more great coaches hired uh, in L.A. And, and Oakland. So I think, the, you know, the, the task is with, with these organizations is that they're smart organizations, they're tough organizations, and you know they're they're led by great coaches and so they're going to have different ways to attack us and i mean we all saw last year what vegas did to us christmas day and we went on you know i think to win the rest of the game so uh never an easy game um but i think 
we just have to be in the mindset of just control what we can control and just try to put this roster together um, and be the best version of ourselves. And I think when we just take care of what we need to do and just try to make our roster better and get better improving from what we did last year. I don't think we ever chase anybody. We just try to be the best version of ourselves. So we'll continue to do that, but certainly a tough task in our division. Uh, great teams, great rosters, great coaching staffs. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, certainly. Um, that's always um, a stress. You'd like to be able to tag all the guys and pay all the guys. And it's tough because the more you win, I mean, the more you got to pay players. And obviously, when you have this amount of success, you're, you're paying a lot of players a lot of money. And then it's equally as tough because you're drafting late. So there's challenges. Um, we'll go through them, and we'll always put our best foot forward. Certainly want to do what we can to try to keep both those players. And that's going to be our goal and intent. Uh, hopefully, we're able to figure something out, um, but every free agency is different, unique, and crazy. And so, but our, you know, it, we do have one tag, and I anticipate probably using it uh, to help us, but I think our goal is to try to get both those players done and then work down the rest of our roster. Yeah, we'll get a chance to meet with him and his agent, Love McColl, and if there's an opportunity there that, that makes sense for him and us, I'm sure we wouldn't be uh, opposed to, to going down that, that road. I mean, listen, when you have a guy that has played in this offense and un understands all the verbiage, all the dialogues, all the play checks, I mean, that's why it, you know, we didn't have a lot of ammunition to do much at the trade deadline last year. That one just kind of opened itself up where the price wasn't much, and our coaches knew him, he knew us, and it worked out. And I mean, thrilled for him for that last play. I mean, what a turn of events for him, but I uh, love McColl and I'm sure we'll be in contact. Um, I'm not a big reader, no. I, I watch the Netflix documentaries and I'm, I'm a big documentary guy, so I don't read much, but I spend a lot of time just watching documentaries and trying to learn about historical events and things in the past, but uh, Mike Berganzi is the guy you want to talk to. He reads, every time I'm in his office, he's reading a book. So he's, if you're wanting to talk books and talk reading, Mike Berganzi is the guy. Uh, you signed, uh, signed Matt Elisa last week. What did you hear when you're investigating that to feel comfortable adding him to Yeah, we go our, through our process. That one was a long process there, and there was, I think, from our end, I, you know, we attack this like we do every player that we add in our roster. We just go through the whole process and our entire intel and security team and um, I think when that came through there it was a pretty much green light and that it was an opportunity for him probably should have been in the league maybe sooner than what he was but he had to go through that process and um, you know looking forward to adding to the roster but as far as the information in our process it, you know there was no hold up there. about Brant Tillis' role and kind of putting that together strategically. Brant's amazing. I'm miss Brant. And um, congratulations to him and, and his family and to the Panthers for, for that hire there. Um, Brant, uh, Chris Shea, that whole staff, I mean, they, and really Brant got ahead of that one early. And I mean, that's, I mean, the key in this league is getting a quarterback. And then once you get him, it's securing him long term and then having the ability to, to do things within the contract to allow and provide flexibility. Um, Brent got on top of that early. Um, he has a tremendous relationship uh, with the agent community, does a great job, super smart. Gonna miss him uh, a lot. Uh, I haven't get a chance to see him yet, but I'm looking forward to, to catching up with him, but gonna miss him. We have some big shoes to fill, Chris Shea and, and Jack Walloff. They'll do a great job, um, but again, Brant was, was on top of that Mahomes contract early and did a great job of guiding the organization through that. Last, last.